Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice. Amen. Amen. Praise God. To be a warrior must fulfill your priesthood. And I think many people lose sight of that. So the lack of ministering to the Lord brings the lack of anointing. And so in that, when you go to battle, you get easily distracted, discouraged, or weariness. You know, again, we are in a time and season right now where there's, I mean, it's crazy. It's awesome, though. Crazy awesome. Things are happening. Things are moving quickly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, would you go there with me, please? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. God is good. In verse uh, 5, chapter 11, verse 5. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Let's speak it together. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to most eminent apostles. Even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. Now here's Paul talking to the Corinth church in Corinth and those there. And he says, did I not, e even though I'm untrained in speech, yet I'm not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Verse 7, did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed, uh, I robbed other churches taking wages from them or to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one for what I lacked the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. As the truth of Christ in me, no one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Acacia. Why? Because I do not love you, God knows. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in all things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. According to their what? Works. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we know that the word tells us as the serpent deceived Eve, amen, and the mother of all flesh, even though the wicked one would come at a certain time, yet not that there's not more wicked ones out there. There's false apostles, false prophets, false teachers, false evangelists, false Christians. And in this, we see that the powers of darkness and Lucifer, who was also a shapeshifter, because he came as an angel of light and so forth, that darkness of humanity was birth. Now, one of the things the Lord shared with me this morning, he says, you know, people don't realize about the dark side of humanity. There is a dark side of humanity which people seem to ignore because they're only looking at the powers of darkness when there's actually a dark side of humanity birthed into this realm. Is everybody with me? And in this dark side of humanity, we know that this originated when Eve was deceived by the serpent because the Lucifer became an angel of light, seducer, produced an offspring, 
Cain and Abel. Cain was the wicked one. And from that time forth, the dark side of humanity was birthed. Does everybody understand that? And John chapter 1. The Gospel of John. Hallelujah. In verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. Now I want you to know that the Word is a representation of voice. Does everybody got it? The word is voice. In the beginning was the voice. And the voice was with God. That spoke. When something speaks, is there words associated with it? Yes. If they didn't speak, there's no words associated with it, is there? So in this, in the beginning was the voice. And the voice was with God. And the voice was God. So he's saying, this is the voice of God. You know, you got to understand in the arena of the Trinity, the Father thinks the voice speaks. Who's the voice? The Word. Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit moves. But they're all one. That's why it's a triune God like you and I are created with a spirit, soul, and body the same way. In verse 3. Oh, uh, verse 2. And he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Now look at this. In him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Go to verse 14. And the voice of God became flesh, or the voice of God became physical in the body of Jesus. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. In the beginning was the voice of God, the creator of pure light, and the light of God is life. When many people have an encounter with the Lord, they see light because it's life. Amen? Amen. It says, so I want you to look at this as it is the voice of light that became physical in the temporary realm to expose the dark side of humanity and its origin with the plan of escape we call grace. Amen. And the light of the truth so people could see. Remember, light brings sight. Darkness what? Blinds. Amen? I will say it again. In the beginning was the voice of God, the creator of pure light, and the light of God is life. The voice of light became physical in the temporary realm to expose the dark side of humanity. Why? It originated from the garden. And its origin, with the plan of escape, which is grace, and the light of the truth so people could see. See what? The dark side of humanity. And understand the dark side of humanity. We need to have eyes of what? Understanding. Amen? Is everybody okay? John 8. The dark side of humanity. John 8, verse 7. Now, there was a woman that got caught in adultery. And in verse 7, so, of course, when the Pharisees and Sadducees, when they continued asking Jesus, he raised himself up and said to them, they wanted to know whether they should stone her or not. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. 
And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, <laughs> went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and a woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one put the woman, uh, but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No, Lord. Does everybody see that? Lord. Amen. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go in what? Sin no more. Only those, <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit further. And, and I want to share this because this is important. Only those that follow walk in the light. Amen. The woman was caught in the dark side of humanity we call the flesh. Remember, it's originated because of the seed brought down, the seed of the serpent. In Romans chapter 7, in verse 13. So we got to ask ourselves, what is the dark side of humanity? It's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It focuses on self. Amen? That is the dark side. In Romans 7, 13, let's speak it. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what, through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. That's the dark side of humanity. It's sin is the presence of evil. For I know that in me that is what? Verse 18, read it with me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But to how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. But sin that dwells in me. That's a presence. That is the dark side of humanity. It is a presence. It's in the flesh. I find then a law that is evil in, is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Warned against the law of my thoughts or my mind. And bringing me what? Into captivity the law of sin which is in my members. Where? In my members. In your flesh. Does your flesh have a voice? Yes. Does everybody get it? So many times people think it's a demon when it's your stinking flesh. Because you can't cast out flesh. Hello. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, the thoughts, I myself serve the law of God. Well, then you need to get the law of God in your thoughts, which is the word of God. Amen. But with the flesh, the law of sin, which is the presence of evil. Nothing good dwells in our flesh. It is the dark side of humanity. Birth off of the serpents, the seed of the serpent, produced with Cain and came down to heritage and everyone and so forth afterwards. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. John 3. Dark side of you.
in verse 13. So we got to ask ourselves, what is the dark side of humanity? It's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It focuses on self. Amen? That is the dark side. In Romans 7, 13, let's speak it. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what, through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. That's the dark side of humanity. It's sin is the presence of evil. For I know that in me, that is what? Verse 18, read it with me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but to how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. But sin that dwells in me. That's a presence. That is the dark side of humanity. It is a presence. It's in the flesh. I find then a law that is evil in, is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Warned against the law of my thoughts or my mind. And bringing me what? Into captivity. The law of sin which is in my members. Where? In my members. In your flesh. Does your flesh have a voice? Yes. Does everybody get it? So many times people think it's a demon when it's your stinking flesh. Because you can't cast out flesh. Hello. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, the thoughts, I myself serve the law of God. Well, then you need to get the law of God in your thoughts, which is the word of God. Amen. But with the flesh, the law of sin, which is the presence of evil. Nothing good dwells in our flesh. It is the dark side of humanity. Birth off of the serpents, the seed of the serpent, produced with Cain and came down to heritage and everyone and so forth afterwards. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. John 3. Dark side of humanity. Hallelujah. Now, remember something that um, the earth and the world are two different things. The earth is the location in its tangible state. The world is associated with the system that's ruled. That's why Jesus said, the ruler of this world has nothing in me. Because he's the ruler of the system, the ruler of the economy, the ruler of all, all the things there. But he doesn't own the earth. He's just the ruler of the world system. That's it. But eventually that will be taken over. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3, um, I mean, yeah, First John chapter 3, verse 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was the what? Wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother 
abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hallelujah. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Wow. That's pretty wild. Again, he who uh, practices righteousness is not like Cain. <laughs> Cain is the wicked one. And in that his original state of being on the back side of, hum of humanity, on the dark side of humanity, again, is with lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. The main characteristics of the dark side of humanity. It's always got to do with I, I, I. Amen. John 8. The dark side of humanity every day. It's always trying to influence us. It's called the flesh. It's always trying to bring us, throw thoughts at us and everything else. But we must be able to discern the carnal mind and the mind of the spirit. That's our responsibility. What one you choose and listen to is up to you, not up to God. Amen? It's up to you. And God cannot deliver you from the flesh. The Bible tells us how to overcome the flesh. We'll get there. Hallelujah. And John 8, 42. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not interpret what I'm telling you? Because you're not able to listen to my voice. You are of your father the devil and your desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you don't believe me? He who is of God hears God's voice. Therefore, you do not hear because you're not of God. Wow. The father of the dark side of humanity is Lucifer. Satan, the devil, the dragon, whatever you want to call him. He's got multiple names because he's a shifter. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5.19. Now we know this already. It says that the evidence are the works of the flesh, which is the dark side of humanity, is evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is a drugs, addictions, and alcohol and stuff. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the life which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and control over self, which is your flesh. Against such there is no law. What law? The law of sin and death. And those who are Christ, those who are followers of Christ, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Where are those passions and desires? In the members. Amen. They crucify it. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one or envying one another. Again, it's a flesh dark side of humanity. Those that follow Christ in all areas that they follow Him, submissive and obedient to His words, His voice, and the leading of His Spirit, 
will crucify the flesh. In other words, they will crucify the dark side of humanity. will not have dominion over us. But those are the things that we must do in everything, in every decision. That's why we want to be able to master the denial of self in every choice and decision. Does everybody get it? Why? Because if you don't, you're going to allow the dark side of humanity, the dark side that's in this temple, on this temple, around this temple, to mislead you. And let me tell you, one of, one of the purposes is the flesh is to try and open doors to the powers, of, to the dem demonic forces. Remember, your flesh is an offspring of darkness. We were born in darkness. We were born in the war. We were born blinded. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 1, 26. Dark side of humanity. Again, we're seeing it in a, an aggressive motion these days. Romans 1.26. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the nature use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge or their memories, God gave them over to the base mind so that those things which are, uh, so they do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do, do the same, but also approve of those who practice such things. This is the dark side of humanity. That's why people are still promoting the things that are displeasing to God and call themselves Christians. Amen? Because their dark side is controlling them. That's why they're rebellious to the ways of God. They cannot submit totally to God or they would be able to resist the devil. So they only submit according to how they feel. Submission is done by emotion, not by truth. Romans 6, 12. Romans 6, 12. Therefore what? Do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its what? Lusts. And do not present your members as an instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin should not have dominion over you. In other words, your dark side of humanity should not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under what? Grace, which is a plan of escape, if you're following it. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to you obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of Obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that through, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that from, form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of what? Righteousness. Praise be to God. In other words, he's saying don't let sin, don't let this have dominion. You must be led by the Spirit, stay filled with the Spirit, so that the dark side of humanity 
You must follow God all the way through. Cannot take dominion over. Listen, we fight it every day. You can sense that draw, that pull, that other push. That every time you want to make a decision, there's something else that comes up. Amen? It's there. Proverbs 29. Oh, happy days. Twenty nine eighteen. It says where there is no revelation. What's revelation? It's something that we call it. Some people call it illumination, but it comes a, a nugget from God that comes to you and says, yo, got it. You know, when Jesus said, who do I say, who, who do they say I am? Peter said, you're, you're the anointed one. And what did Jesus say? He said, you didn't get that from no man. That came from my father. That's called revelation. You will not get revelation without spending time with God. You'll get illumination, you know, but revelation is what brings the restraints. Watch. Where there's no revelation, the people cast off the restraints of what? The dark side of humanity called the flesh. That's what, that's what brings you tighter. That's what grabs them and binds them. It's, that's what keeps them crucified. But happy is he who keeps the law or the word or the voice of God. Where there is no revelation, they cast off restraints. We see that happen. Why do people drift? Why do people backslide? No revelation. There's really not taking time with God. They're not getting in God's presence. Man, how many times has God spoke to you when we gather together and worship God? Man, all of a sudden revelation comes. Whoa. Amen. No revelation, no restraint to the darkness of humanity called the flesh. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. One of the things. He doesn't want you getting revelation. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Let's speak it. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested, and whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not as love his brother. Again, in this, this is so powerful because the voice of light came to expose the dark side of humanity and imprison those that serve the darkness of humanity. That's what we're seeing right now. The dark side of humanity is so exploded. It's incredible. They don't realize that they are serving the enemy if they're living in the flesh. And the Word tells us only those who are in the Spirit won't be condemned. But again, we've got to begin to recognize that the flesh is more than just flesh. It is the dark side of humanity. Amen? Matthew 6. Matthew 6.22 Think about how, on the dark side 
of humanity in their flesh. How many times that when we were out in the world and we did things, we knew that they were wrong, but we didn't repent for them. Amen? Or if you knew that it was wrong after you were following the Lord and you blew it, you may make mistakes, but if you're closer to the Lord, you repent quickly. But the enemy, the dark side, will try to pretend, prevent you from repenting. If he can prevent you from repenting, you can't get revelation. If you can't get revelation, you can't restrain the, old, the dark side of humanity. And so then the dark side continuously creeps up, creeps up, creeps up, creeps up, and begins to take over the choices and decisions. And you become blinded more and more and more. Now the light can't see all the way through. Look at in this, in um, Matthew 6 and verse 22. What does it say? The lamp of the body is the what? The eye. In other words, the eye is the gate to your soul. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of what? Light and life. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And therefore, the light that is in you is what? Darkness. Now, how great is that darkness? Then he says something right afterwards. You can't serve two masters. For either you, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. Therefore I say, you don't worry about your what? Your life, what you shall eat, drink, and so forth, and what about your body and what you will put on. And Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing and materialism? You know, one of the great attackers and promoters of the dark side is vanity. We deal with it every day. Everybody here wants to be perfect in the Lord. Amen. But vanity is a tremendous, tremendous power in promoting and keeping alive the dark side of humanity. We'll go on that another time. Praise God. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 1. But know this, in the last days perilous times will come, which we know we're in. For men will be lovers of themselves. We see that all over. Why? That's the dark side of humanity. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without control over the old man, the self, brutal despisers of good, Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In other words, lovers of themselves. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Again, avoid those. Those are rejecting the voice of light and refuse to follow the voice of light, which is life to them. What the word is saying is have no fellowship with them. Amen? Be a witness, and that's that. But certainly don't hang with them. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 3. Second Corinthians 4, verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, in other words, what is the gospel? It's a message of truth. It's the voice of light that has been recorded. What is the gospel? The voice of light that has been recorded. It's to bring and maintain and empower to salvation and overcome the dark side for each and every one. What does the word said? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? perishing, whose minds, thoughts, the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe or do not follow 
lest the light of the voice of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Again, the voice of light that has been recorded is to bring, maintain, and empower to salvation to overcome the dark side of humanity. It is to enlighten and bring awareness. Again, knowledge is important. It is to make what is unseen to become seen. Amen? Go to Psalm 51. Verse 1. Psalm 51, verse 1. Glory. Somebody there? Let's speak it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin remember sin is the presence of evil transgression is the act of its influence and iniquity is the curse that it brings on the family line verse 3 for I acknowledge my transgression my act and my sin which is the presence of evil, is always what before me in other words the dark side of humanity against you you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in what? Iniquity. Wow, that's how we came into this world, right? And in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the in inward part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssops, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make, make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirits. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will be converted to you. What a prayer of request, huh? And I'm going to close this 2 Peter chapter 1. Dark side of humanity. So if we're seeing, in other words, the restrainer that's on the earth right now, which is the body of Christ, that those, even those that there's the dark side of humanity that are not able to restrain their dark side, amen? Does everybody understand that? There are individuals that are not able to restrain so much of their dark side, but the presence of God is assisting them in restraining. Does everybody get it? But there's a level of restraint. But when the body of Christ is removed from the earth, there is no restraint. The dark side of humanity will be totally taken over by darkness. 1 Peter, or 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak of grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? In the knowledge. The recorded voice of light of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, give all diligence Add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, 
has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more what? Diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? You won't stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word and exposure of the dark side of humanity. We ask that you bring us to the place of awareness and more detailedness that we can discern and understand. That we would know every unction and influence of the dark side of humanity. That we would have the dominion through the divine nature and the anointing of Christ Jesus in every choice and decision, not allowing the carnal part of humanity to have control. Lord, protect us and guide us and expose any area we have open doors to the dark side of humanity that they may be shut in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.